Hey everyone, welcome to the AI show. I am Cassie Brevue, and today we are going to be talking about the Azure Video Indexer. You're not gonna to wanna to miss it. So I am joined by the amazing people that are working on this product. Thank you so much for being here. Can you tell me a little bit about yourselves? Sure. I'm uh, David Dykman. I'm a product manager on the Azure Video Indexer product team. Uh, so hi, hey. everyone. It's great to be here. Uh, so I'm Yonate Hoffman, and I lead the data science team uh, of Video Indexer. Great. Thank you so much for being here. Now, some people may have not heard of Azure Video Indexer. Can you tell me a little bit about what it is? So Azure Video Indexer is uh, actually a uh, Azure GA product, actually GA from uh, 2018. Uh, recently went GA uh, as, an, as, a, as an ARM resource. It was now a first class uh, Azure resource. And um, customers can index their video. So what the Video Indexer service does is it runs um, tens of AI models over their video and audio content to generate really valuable uh, insights. Okay, so you have some things to show us. Let's jump in. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks. So uh, as you can see here, um, Azure Video Indexer extracts insights from video and audio files through a rich set of machine learning algorithms. What does that mean? So it actually is for batch content, so it's not for streaming. So uh, often customers will have extensive uh, video archives or video content, and they could upload that through the services. We're part, we're in Azure, um, applied AI service as part of the uh, co Azure Cognitive Services. Um, Video Indexer is actually 30 plus AI models and services rolled into one. So uh, instead of having to you know, put together all the different APIs and Azure Media Services and Cognitive Services, uh, Video Indexer is a single endpoint where you can consume that service um, as a turnkey solution, it makes it really simple and easy to consume. And that's what we mean as a cloud SaaS offering. Uh, as I mentioned, this is GA uh, since 2018. Um, and with that, we will also um, kind of discuss how uh, users engage with uh, the video indexer. So there's actually three options. And um, with this, it really depends on the custom profile, what they're trying to do. So video indexer can be used through the portal experience, which we'll be demoing and focusing on today, as well as has embeddable widgets where you can take different parts of Video Indexer and put it into your own application. And for customers that have you know, hundreds or thousands of, of videos that they're looking to um, index, there's the APIs. Um, and there's a great setup where you can leverage that and really uh, do it at, at scale um, to process uh, those hundreds or thousands of videos. And you can see that here kind of with, with that little chart here on the left. So if you're you know just getting started, so you'll we'll, we'll, we'll have a look soon that you can use the portal. If you have you know basic or low volume, a video, so that's a great experience. Um, when you're starting to look and trying to do a POC and see if it's a good fit, uh, you want to build it in your application, so then you can start using embeddable widgets. Um, and that's how many uh, customers embed the video indexer widget in their applications. Um, and then for those who are going, you know, full blast at scales, then there's the uh, the API option. So you said something I want to ask a little bit more about. What are some of the ways customers are using this or some of like the common use cases for the video indexer? Sure. Um, it's a great question. So almost every company today, and this is super interesting when we engage with our customers, is a media company. So there's like the traditional media companies, um, and there are those that are you know producing you know content of television and movies. There's um, news programs, but also just enterprise customers. And they all have huge media archives, some larger than others, and they have different needs of it. But um, a media archive is only a value if it's accessible, if you know what's there, uh, if you know what people appear when, um, what topics are covered when, what places are referenced, what brands are referenced. And that's often a black box. Um, and they don't have an easy way without difficult and uh, menial, manual processes for you know people to go. We're on regular calls where people are saying like the current process is you know we manually go in and and uh, we have, we have a whole team of people that do this. Um, but so to be able to just take that archive and take that and uh, take those files and be able to add value to, to um, expose that data from those from that video and audio 
content and make it searchable and make it accessible. Uh, and they can repurpose those videos. They can make it accessible to others. That's um, really the something that we hear about often. That's a, a popular use case. Um, one other, I think, the other um, use case that's that's very popular in uh, with our um, with our customers is is uh, accessibility. So we'll see soon that Video Indexer allows you to uh, transcribe and uh, translate the content. So if you have a, a, a knowledge or a learning platform and you have classes and you want to make it accessible to a worldwide audience or those that might be hearing impaired, um, so you could, and you don't necessarily have the resources to develop a solution or you want to build our solution into your application, um, you could you'd simply uh, build, implement uh, your solution through Video Indexer and then you'll have um, transcription built in and translation to tens of languages available out of the box. That's super important work, being able to make things accessible, especially where we're living in such an online world, um, and being able to make sure that everybody can you know, access in the content. So that's awesome. And talking about how everybody's kind of a media company with, with just the way that digital media is going, being able to unlock you know, insights into your video content and being able to make decisions on that and, and to kind of update your business processes. So that's really cool. So I think you have a, like a demo to show us now, right? Absolutely. So let me just jump okay. back to that. So here we have the video indexer portal or site. And uh, if you've already uh, indexed videos, you'll see uh, all of them available uh, to you here. If you're new and just want to get started and don't necessarily uh, have something available, there's a whole bunch of samples that you could just play around with uh, and, and, and get started there. Um, the, up the upload experience is really simple and straightforward. Simply upload drag the uh, browser file, and then you, it takes a, a couple of minutes, depending on the length of the video, and you are uh, good to go. We also um, allow you, of course, so let's say you've indexed uh, tens of videos, you have tons of insights, and you want to be able to search across that content, so you could just simply do that. And of course, in, in, and not only will you find what's covered, but exactly where, so if I want to look for a friend's side, yeah, I could search, and there I could see all the videos that I've indexed where Satya shows up exactly, um, when and how that happens. One thing the video indexer also allows you to do is you'll see here on the left, there's the model customizations. So we have um, like a tens of AI models available out of the box, but you're also able to customize those models. So um, if you have uh, people models or people that will be in videos over uh, and over and you want them to be recognized, so you could actually um, upload uh, the, those images and build customized models. And you can do that for languages and brands, as well as animated characters. I have a question there. OK, so Please. I can take these existing models that are working for me in the video indexer. And I can mm -hmm. say I want it to recognize individual people that I have labeled in it. Is that, am I, I understanding that right? Correct. So I'll, I'll, I sh uh, I'll, I'll hopefully make a little bit more sense now. Um, so we moved over to uh, one of the indexed videos. And you see here on the left, we have um, the player. And it's the standard uh, Azure Media Services player. And on the right, you have all of the uh, insights. And we'll start going through uh, some of them. And for each one of the people um, that's detected as uh, through facial recognition with our identification through video indexer, you can just select on any one of them and then um, see where in the video that person appears. There you go. And what you're able to do is, let's say, this guy's name is Steve. I can simply edit it and say unknown 20 is now Steve. And that actually, in the background, starts uh, a person model, which will then you, you're starting to train it by identifying Steve. And then in future videos, it'll be recognized. Of course, the more images and the more you enrich the model, the better it'll, better it'll perform, and you need more get more into that. But um, so that's something you could actually do just straight through the, the portal experience. Well, that's super powerful that they can um, start getting those insights as to who's in the video. So you're able to take this unstructured data that you would have been really difficult to, to you know, manually go through and label and find these people. And once you kind of get that, you get your model starts to understand, and then you can start getting those insights. So what else can this do? Um, sure, so one other thing that if, um, the, let's say the video had celebrities or public personas. 
So that mm -hmm. would actually be um, detected natively. So you would be able to see, for example, if we're looking at a video with Saiti Nadella, so he would show up and you would actually have a, a bio about that person. Um, so that's been really useful for media companies or, or others that are dealing with public figures and they just out of the box have that was recognized and they have these people recognized and they know exactly where in the video they appear. Very cool. Um, so we'll just look through um, some of the insights that are provided for each of the videos. So in addition to the people, there's also observe people, which kind of tracks the, the people's movement and has some aspects of them as they go through the video. So for example, um, this person appears in 1.86% of the video and we, it has some aspects of their dress of short sleeves and long pants. Um, we also do topic inferences. So not just by mining words in the transcription, but actually um, there's a models to detect what topics are being discussed in the video uh, and that's shared as well. Um, there's audio event detection. So if there are, you know, if, if a crowd erupts or there's some significant gunshot or a siren or something, then th that is detected um, as well as uh, keywords. And for any of them, you can see exactly where it'll take you to exactly in the video where that happens. Um, there is also uh, labels, named entities. So if you want to be able to see where a city, um, a location, or uh, or uh, brands or people, um, see here that guy <laughs> is detected as a person. But uh, so then um, that that's and this is super valuable as well when people especially want to be able to let's say you have a social media platform or your data asset management platform and you want to be able to kind of uh, get an idea of where brands are mentioned in your videos and be able to search across that. So having that brand recognition is super useful. Um, and with media companies and, and others who are creating content, so we also do scene segmentation. And this is, it may sound straightforward, but it's, it's super complicated to understand and kind of infer when a scene starts and ends as well as shot and uh, keyframes. Um, so for scenes, that's like if I want to be able to edit different pieces together, it will automatically segment out my video and I can then easier kind of segment things and put them together the way I exactly. want Exactly, exactly. When there's cool. a transition from, from one scene to the other, exactly. Um, so it looks like, so you take the video, you also get the audio and you do all kinds of processing on that. So we get the text, we get named entity recognition, we get brands. Um, we, what else, what else does that do in, from the audio? Yeah, and these, that's a great point that the, these insights are actually a blend of audio and, and video together. Mm -hmm. um, one of the, I mentioned that there's transcription. So, um, and here in the timeline pipe, you can see the transcription. This is also editable. So it, there's re, it's really great quality, but let's say um, something didn't come out. It's not as transcribed as you would like. So you can um, edify, uh, edit that and, and modify it. Um, you could also, and for accessibility, this is super useful. You could just move from um, one language to another and the entire transcription will be moved. So if you want to make a single um, video or lesson available to a worldwide community, all you have to do is put in a video indexer and you're, you're good to go. So I can take my video and I can do localization in different languages by simply loading it in here, getting the transcription and select, selecting language. Exactly, wow. or through an, in, in, as well as uh, just pull it out through an, the uh, API, you select the language you want and then extract it that way. Yeah, and um, of course this is all downloadable, the, the, the insights as well as the source video or the closed caption transcription. So this is all uh, easily exportable um, to be used as needed. Now, what format does my video have to be in? Does it take all types of video formats or do I need to be MP4 or what, what are supported? So as, as it's built on Azure Media Services, it supports a wide range of formats. So it's, it, we're, most of the popular ones, and we, it's really not an issue and they're, they're supported. All right, David, that was really cool. And I love to know how things work. So Yanit, would you bring me behind the scenes and show me a little bit about how this works? Yeah, Cassie, sure. Okay, so I'm going to show this scary slide with the backend architecture of Video Indexer, but don't worry, you don't need to read everything here. And actually, it's pretty cool because each cube here is an AI model by itself, an AI model that we created, the data science team of Video Indexer, or we collaborated with another uh, data science team in Microsoft to use their model. 
And the model can get as an input the video, the frames, the images, or the audio, or a combination uh, of uh, both of them. Um, I want to focus on a, one a particular model called the OCR because it involves both collaboration and, and innovation. So let's talk a bit about OCR. There is a lot of models. I know he said there were 30 plus models, but seeing that out in a diagram is crazy, the amount of things that this service is doing. So you mentioned OCR. Um, if someone's not familiar with what that is, could you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. So OCR is optical character recognition, and it means detecting the text that within the frame, the image. For example, imagine a scene of a street view. So you have all sorts of signs and commercials, and all this text is embedded within the image, and we would like to capture it. It's very important for our customers. So luckily for us, there is a great model developed in Microsoft by the Cognitive Services Vision team called READ. And this is a great OCR model, but it works on images, of course, and we are in the video domain. So actually, we created in our team an algorithmic layer to work with their model on videos. So now I can show you how it looks in our portal. Okay, so for example, here you can see a video that is very rich with the information, textual information within the images. And you see that here we actually capture that these, this information. And it's very useful for our uh, users. It's, it's added to the transcript. Here is another example of Microsoft video. And you can see that the names of the speakers is actually only shown on the screen. So in terms of accessibility, we are able to add the name of the speakers to the full transcript and give a very good solution for our users. OCR is a great insight by itself, but it's also a great input for other models. For example, we use the OCR insight as an input for the topics models David showed before. Okay, so OCR is a great insight by itself, but it can actually also be the input for other models. For example, uh, it's the input for our new feature called clapperboard detection, which was we just announced on, uh, at Ignite. It's a great project developed by my Matan Seri from my team. Uh, so do you know these clapperboard items of the uh, industry where you do action and you write all the information of the uh, role in the scene, there is actually a need to detect them automatically. Uh, imagine that there is a three hours footage uh, uh, of the scene over and over, and they want to detect where the clapperboard appeared, and they also want to capture what's written on it. It's very valuable information. So what Matan, Matan did is actually taking the OCR as an input for an algorithm that detects when a clapperboard appears. It's not an easy task because there are different clapper boards and they have a different structure and different key values are written on them. And we want to detect them all. So actually our uh, algorithm, I will show you how it looks in our uh, portal. You can see here that it actually detects when the clapper board appeared here. This is a time when the clapper board appeared. And it also, it also captured all the key values that were on it, that were written on it. And this is one clapper board with one structure. Here's another clapper board with a different structure. And again, it's detected when the clapper board appeared and also uh, the text that is written on it. Okay, that was really cool. Um, I could see how, you know, editors would have to spend a lot of time looking for that clapperboard, you know, piece and finding those things. And then when you're talking about the different scene segmentation as well, uh, yeah. I can see a lot of video editing kind of features coming from this. So there's there's so many different use cases, um, so much going on. That's that uh, presentation that you showed with all of the different models that are going into this, how we're able to take, you know, a, a video, get really complex information out of it, that the text from the, the video itself, the, the text of the audio, we can transcribe that into different languages. Um, there was so much there, I'm probably missing things. It It's really neat. So what else should they know? One thing that they should know is they can get started today with a free trial. So even, you don't even need an Azure subscription. You could just uh, create an account and get going with up to 10 free hours, up to 40 hours uh, free if you're using the API. 
And with that, you can get a really great idea of what the solution can do and how it might be able to benefit you. That's awesome. So they can go try it out on their, their, their video now and see if they can get those insights that they need and try to figure out how they can work that into their, their workflows before they kind of jump in. Absolutely. And then um, there was something that's newly generally available. What was that? Yes. So um, we had what till now we had what was called classic accounts and recently we went GA with uh, ARM resource manager accounts. And there's actually a pretty smooth uh, migration flow to move from being a class account to an ARM account. And once you do that, um, you could benefit from all the goodness of being in a first class Azure service with the Azure monitor integration, RBAC security features and, and the like. So you'll, you'll see that at the top of, uh, the, uh, of the video indexer portal. And that's a really uh, exciting direction for video indexer. Um, one thing that I thought was interesting when I was looking at the documentation is I noticed um, some responsible AI notifications, and I really love seeing that. Um, I think that at, at Microsoft in general does a lot, of, a really good job about incorporating ethics and responsible AI into their different services. Um, can you tell me a little bit about what are some of the like responsible AI features are that are part of this? A responsible AI is something that we take very seriously, and now there is actually an application process and. Um, some aspects in facial recognition of the service are actually not available out of the box, and there's an application process to make sure they're going to be used um, in a safe and safe and ethical manner before that is uh, made available to the user. So, absolutely, that's something um, that's important to the service. Fantastic. Yeah, I would like to add that we pay a lot of attention in the data science team at Microsoft in general, and in the data science team of Video Indexer for responsible AI, the data that we are using, the models that we are taking. Good, you know, with, with great power comes great responsibility, right? I feel like that comes in here and, and this is an extremely powerful service and, and approaching it through a responsible framework is it's awesome. So I'm glad to hear that. Um, if they want to learn more, where should they go? They can go to our documentation um, they can, on, uh, on Twitter, they can follow us on Twitter where we uh, release all the updates. And of course, they can just go to the portal and get started with a free trial. And you can just uh, enjoy it there um, and, and uh, you know, just start playing around already. We also released some great blogs recently about the OCR, about the Clapper board, and about other features that we are just uh, announced. So read them. Great. Well, thank you so much for joining us on the AI show today. I know I'm excited to go try out this uh, video indexer. Maybe it can help me with the video content I can create. Like it'll edit it for me, get those nice cuts. Maybe I need to get one of those cool clappers. Like I don't have one of those yet. Now I have more things to, to buy. But you anyway, should have. Yeah. Right? You can go Hollywood. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but with the tech flair, you know. And <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, for being here again and showing us the cool features that are part of Azure Video Indexer. Thank, thank you for having us. Thanks so much, Cassie.